Welcome to another video here on the Giant Take Podcast YouTube channel. I am Josh and I am joined by my co-host Alex. Here's a clip where we're reacting to the Joe Shane press conference. Obviously that happened today. So here are our reactions. Yeah, I don't know where we want to go. We can kind of bounce around as we go through. Uh, the first thing that I kind of heard from Shane um, was that he was mentioning Daniel Jones. That was the first prominent, relevant thing that popped into my head. When talking about Jones, I think he treaded, he, he was treading lightly, whereas he didn't want to say we're moving on from him, but did want to kind of keep in everyone's head that, that he is still on the New York Giants. He was also in attendance for the press conference. So for for Shane to say, hey, listen, um, unfortunately, Jones is going to be moving on after uh, this coming season. Like, you're not going to do that in your in your first press conference with the owners, by the way, standing right over your shoulder, watching your every move, as well as the general public. There was no delay here. Like there was the Mara press conference. There wasn't, you know, uh, we're able, you know, don't have us go live because we're going to take all the bad stuff out. No, this was live on the giants.com, the YouTube channel. So it was everywhere that this wasn't, you know, this wasn't anything that was delayed. I think Shane did a good job. I think he answered questions. Well, he mentioned that the giants have like 11 draft picks. There was one, there was one thing there. He talked about the salary cap, how he did address that. That is an issue. He was asked about Brian Dable specifically because, you know, known to be the front runner as the Giants' new head coach. He's the first person to have two interviews, uh, you know, already one, I think, on Zoom and then one in person. So, you know, that was a question asked to him. He didn't want to address him individually because there's other candidates um, that, that are out there, right, that we will get into later. So there, there was that to note. I mean, Alex, I don't know if there's anything that comes to your mind, like just off the bat of what he was talking about. Those are like a few things when thinking about it that like just kind of shoot out of my brain. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll get to some of the quotes. We have a lot of them. One thing I would say is he, you know, maybe he's not a Joe Judge type of speaker, but, uh, you know, he seemed down to earth. He seemed authentic. And, and you really got that. And uh, throughout the whole press conference, really. So, I mean, I'm going to go right to the first clip we have, actually about Joe Shane uh, and what he thought or, or kind of his opinion on becoming GM uh, of the New York Giants. You ready for this next chapter in your journey? Yeah, that's a good question. And you, you ready for this next chapter in your journey? Yeah, that's a good question. And to me, it was the right fit, you know, against the New York Giants. Like this is, this is the New York Giants. Now I'm standing up here as the general manager. So that was, that was always really cool to me. The fact that I even interviewed, you know, it's a historic franchise. So to know you're ever ready, I, you know, I don't know if you're ever ready for this job. There's no, there's no manual that you can go to, you know, a couple of years ago, COVID came and you're the general manager and, you know, we get emails on Friday night. Now you got to cut your staff down to 70 in the building. Again, there's no manual. You got to be able to problem solve. It's not just sitting in an office scouting. So, the best thing that happened for me was working for Brandon Bean because he didn't come up the traditional scouting path. Now he can scout and he can evaluate, but he was also a director of football operations. So he dealt with salary cap. He dealt with the training room. He dealt with sports performance. He dealt with the entire football organization. And he put me in his hip pocket and taught me that side of the business that I didn't necessarily know. So again, I could be, you know, I could be picky. Um, there's only 32 of these things. So, but I did have a, you know, Buffalo has a good roster. They have a young quarterback. I knew if I didn't get a, a job, I was in a good situation. But this was a job I wanted. As soon as I, after that first interview in the Zoom, you know, I called my wife and said, that's a job I want. I want to go get that job. It's right for us. I think a big thing with that is he, I, who did he talk to? Bill Parcells? Was Bill Parcells that he talked to, you know, about the job? He already spoke to him. And he said, this is going to be your favorite job or, or something along those lines. Uh, I wish I had the quote in front of me. I just thought that was a great little moment, a uh, little tidbit that he had in there. And he said he, you know, he loves Bill Parcells' coaching style. He mentioned him as a guy that he looked up to and looks up to still uh, to this day as someone that 
I want to be like that guy. I want to do as well as he's doing. He also addressed scouting because that's a big part of what he did with the Buffalo Bills. He was known to be that very good scouter. But, you know, he said that, you know, being like a scouting expert isn't all we're doing here because we have a team of players that, you know, are very good. And because someone asked, is this like a full rebuild? And he said, we still have a list of players here, but you got to do well in the draft. And and I, I tend to agree with him there. I, I think that this team with the weapons that they have, Alex, we mentioned it time and time again, with the right head coach, with the right offensive coordinator, the team that this Giants, you know, that the Giants, this Giants team last season could have been a playoff team if coached correctly. That's the key words. If coached correctly, they weren't coached correctly, they didn't succeed. Not saying it's all the coach's fault, but I think we did have a playoff roster. That's why we were predicting the 9-10 win season, the playoff season in the preseason heading into 2021, uh, the 2021 NFL regular season. That's why we were doing that because we knew, yeah, this roster is filled with a lot of talent. And after the season, it's like, wow, this is not good. So we're rebuilding and Shane's a step of the way there. And I think he addressed that well uh, by talking about it. He also said that one game that stood out to him when watching film about uh, the New York Giants, the Saints game, he said that one really stood out to him, which I mean, yeah, that was probably our biggest win of the season. Uh, going into overtime in there in, in um in New Orleans, so that's just interesting that that's the one that stood out to him because that was early in the regular season and you know kind of for, not forgot about that game but that you know that's far in my memory now it's been a few months right we're almost in February so funny that he brought that one up but I do I do agree we had that Daniel Jones long ball if you remember correctly to John Ross that was the one deep ball I saw all season from Jones that's the one thing you can use in a highlight reel. So th- that's something that stood out to me. Yeah, for sure. Now, I want to go through some of the, the quotes about what we have here. Uh, or not quotes, some of them quotes, just some of them updates here. Like Josh mentioned before, Jones was actually present at the press conference. Uh, him, Logan Ryan, Blake Martinez, Sterling Shepard, and Cam Brown uh, were in attendance for the GM's press conference, the new GM, Joe Shane. So that's something. A bit interesting, I guess. I'm not sure if that's normal or not, to be honest. But, I mean, whatever. It seems fine. Uh, Pat Leonard reported on that. And um, the big headline... So, yeah, go ahead. Do you have something? I mean, yeah, he, he said the only one that he mentioned by name, though, which is interesting, was Daniel Jones. I guess because he was just specifically asked about Jones and he, he probably didn't want to address players. In, he mentioned Saquon. After, not during the press conference, but like when they were the media was just asking him questions after he mentioned Saquon, right? And he said that Saquon is going to be our future, kind of like he's did, he did Jones, he alluded to it, right? He doesn't want to say it specifically because he doesn't know the specific plans, he hasn't brought in coaches yet. But it seems like Saquon uh, and Daniel Jones will be sticking around from Mara and from what um, uh, what Joe uh, Shane said. And he did say, though, like, I've met Daniel, and I've seen him around the building the first few days that I've been here. Yeah, and the quote that really took all the headlines, at least from Joe Shane, uh, Mara had a couple towards the end, as usually likes to steal the thunder, uh, steal that medium Pepsi. When the new, uh, not that one, sorry. Oh, yeah, here we go. When the new staff gets in here, there's so many quotes, it's just hard to figure out which one's right. When the new staff gets in here, we'll build an offense around Daniel to accentuate what he does best, which makes it seem like they're trying to build around Daniel Jones. Some people are outraged. Some people are, you know, okay with it, like me, probably like Josh. Some people are excited, those Danny Dimes lovers. And then, of course, you got the Danny Dimes haters crying right now. Uh, So it's a mixed bag, but that was kind of like the big quote of the day. And if that's the big quote, then you know it was like a mellow press conference, I think. And you and Alex, I feel like that's what you want, though. That's what I'm saying when I'm, I'm, what I'm saying. Yeah, you well, don't I mean, need it, it was no, it was kind of boring. You don't need we're gonna punch you in the mouth for 60 minutes because then in two years when you don't do that, that's gonna be a problem. So Shane didn't go up there and be like, guys, uh, in three years we're gonna be Super Bowl champions, okay? Uh, no, he didn't do that. He addressed the problems. He mentioned the problems, which is good, right? Because this team needs to do that. Even John Mara, with like you said, he had a few bomb. 
uh, little quotes at the, at, you know, when press uh, members came up to him, media members came up to him. One of them was, listen, we put Daniel Jones in all the wrong situations. They, he, he basically admitted, yeah, you know, whether it's multiple offensive coordinators, multiple head coaches, we, we've not set up Daniel Jones for success. Thank you. That's one step in the way to getting Daniel Jones in the right situation. Can we do that? You know, yeah. I, it might have taken four years, but have we done it? Finally, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I think it's good, though, that Mara is actually admitting it, though. What isn't good is that Joe Shane is still mentioning the Maras in his decision-making for coaches. I think he talked about how Chris Mara, when, when they were looking at coaches, he's like, oh, we got to decide with him. No, don't be involved, Maras. Stay out of this. Let Shane decide. You said, uh, John Mara said, in his press conference before hiring a GM, right? He said, we're going to let the GM decide who the coach is. Then let the GM decide who the coach is. Don't be in on the decision. I get you're in the interviews. That's fine. You can have it. You can talk about it with him, but just don't be in the final decision at the end of things when all these interviews are done. Yeah, and, and Mara on Daniel Jones says, we do feel Daniel can play. We've done everything possible to screw this kid up. The first part of solving a problem is to admit what went wrong, and I guess that's good. But like you said, it is a bit concerning that, the Maras are still involved, that the Tish, or Steve Tish is still involved, I was about to say the Tish is the singular Tish uh, that's involved. Not that he's really involved. Um, but it's certainly concerning uh, that they still have so much say in the, you know, obviously John Mara's the owner, but Chris Mara, I know some people bro, uh, blow the Chris Mara stuff out of proportion. I think it's okay. I like it's his brother. You're not getting rid of him. Like I've just come to accept it. Some people are like, you know, Chris Mara out. Like it's not going to happen. Just calm down, everyone. No, Joe Shane's not going to fire Chris Mara because then he's going to lose his job. So it, it's just not going to happen. I'm kind of giving up on that, right? Like you know, he's here to stay. We we have to work around it. That's what I'm and right. And if we're going to work around it, just don't have Chris Mara making all the decisions. Like John Mara have them not making decisions. Alex. You mentioned how some people were upset about Daniel Jones, uh, you know, being in their quote unquote future plans, the New York Giants. Well, there was there was a quarterback specifically that Giants fans were like, oh, maybe we can get this guy in the office. Maybe we can trade for him. Well, John Mars shut those rumors down real quick. And I'm talking about Deshaun Watson, uh, the quarterback for the Houston Texans that hasn't been playing due to the uh, what, sexual assault allegations, I believe they are. And so will he ever play for a team in the NFL again? That's a question. But, you know, will he play for the New York Giants? That was also a question until a few hours ago. Alex, you have the clip. I mean, everyone wants to follow up. Sorry, John. Yeah, I... There's uh, there's so many reasons why we wouldn't do that. I mean, cap wise, we couldn't afford it, but more importantly, uh, with the allegations that, that are out there right now, that's just not the right fit for us. Thank you. I know. Look at the guy well, behind him. He just looks confused. He's just he's not he's not in the right place. <laughs> I don't know if Mar had trouble standing. He seemed a little pacey there. Uh, he was like kind of pacing up and down, you know, wobbling like. Yeah, he's getting old. Come on, don't be mean. I'm not <laughs> being mean. I, I just thought he looked a little bit uncomfortable. Let's run through these other bullet points regarding Joe Shane Alex. He said he's a true believer in giving an opportunity to everyone on the current Giants staff. He said there's a lot of good people in the building. He's also looking forward to working with, ev and he's also looking forward to working with, and then new sentence, everyone will be evaluated. He also said the Giants salary cap situation, which Alex, you can have a say in this. I know you're a big salary cap guy is a concern and it's real said he and Kevel a and can't read quotes Kevel Abrams? said he Kevel said he and Kevin Abrams will sit down and talk about it soon Alex what it, do you like that finally we have a GM that's addressing the cap situation and not just throwing money out there and signing free agents I I'm sure you definitely like I, I wouldn't just say that but it, it it does confirm this quote that Kevin Abrams is most likely staying so any Giants fans that wanted him gone he's probably staying 
Uh, so you can confirm that. But yeah, I mean, he, he said we're going to have to make tough decisions multiple times throughout their press conference. We don't have the quote, but uh, he, you know, he mentioned multiple times we're going to have to make tough decisions about who to get rid of uh, and who to keep. And, uh, you know, he, he knows that and he, he, he stressed that multiple times. So hopefully he clears it up. And in 2023, we're uh, much more open. Yeah. And so we, w- with that, we can go to the next one. He said all of the head coaching candidates bring a different skill set. And that was from the, what I mentioned earlier, the Brian Dable question. Someone asked him specifically about what traits does I think Dable have? So he went and just said, every every coach that we're interviewing has a skill set. And it's true. There's pretty good coaching candidates in there, Alex. There's, not, there's no one that's like not qualified for the job. And if you want to know more about those coaching candidates, we have profile videos about each head coach candidate all on our YouTube channel right now. Everyone that has been interviewed for the New York Giants, and I think we're going to still have more as they interview more people uh, coming out soon. So, you know, that, that's that's a big thing. So far, we've had Dan Quinn, Lou Anarumo, Leslie Frazier, and Brian Dable all on the YouTube channel. So please go check that out, the Giant Take Podcast on YouTube. Uh, So again, coming from Shane, if they have previous head coaching experience, fine. If they don't, that's fine too. Whatever is best for the team. Um, And then he also said, quote, I believe in drafting, developing, and retaining our own. So again, a guy that really likes scouting players, I'm sure he's already doing some draft prep. He also has free agency to worry about. That's coming first. He even admitted, he said, I got to do more research about this free agency, you know, about what we're going to look for in free agents that we'll bring into the team. He wasn't shy about addressing that. He hasn't done that much research in it yet. So I think that's good too. He's being honest. He's not going out there and be like, yeah, I know all the guys that are on the list. No, he's letting you know he hasn't done that much research, but I'm sure he'll get around to it. So that. I think that's everything we got on the uh, Joe Shane press conference. And we'll leave it with, I'm going to leave it with my final thoughts on the press conference. Again, it was mellow. It was good. He looks very professional. He looks like he knows what he's doing. And right now, I sit happy with him in the GM role. There is, there, there is no other guy that I want in the GM role right now. I thought he was one of the top candidates. And he was the one who made it out. You know, I know we liked Peters. I know we liked Poles, who's already ended up with the Bears now. Ryan Poles is now the GM of the Bears. So it is what it is. That My final thought is I'm happy that he's our GM. Okay? I'll leave it as simple as that. I think there's positives to look at. I think he seems like a good candidate. And really, we'll see this offseason, at least in the beginning what he does, what his decisions are, he's going to make. That'll give us a sense. And really, we'll see in the next couple of seasons what the results on the field are. And that'll really tell us what his success, uh, whether or not he's going to be a successful GM or not. Are we going to see progression or are we not? Um, and that's going to be the main thing. And is this team going to start winning games again? Because that's ultimately what he's going to be judged on. And I think specifically the draft, because that's his strong suit. That's what he was doing when he was the assistant GM, right, of the Buffalo Bills. I mean everything, right? Because he's the GM now. He's the top dog. He's I know, but I'm, what I'm saying specifically the draft, because that is his strong suit. So I think what we have to look for, and especially because that's what we're going to be building, and I think the draft is going to be really where we're looking at him, Alex. Because free agency, we don't have any money. Not any money, but we don't have this a lot season, of money. Right? So not- but next season, we'll have a ton of money. So we, we will have to judge him next season in free agency. I don't really want to get into an argument about this right now. But what I'm saying is right now, this offseason, we don't have money to spend in the free agency window. So that's not something to look out for, in my opinion, from Joe Shane. I think it's a draft because we have two first-round picks, two, like, two separated from each other, two picks separated from each other, five and seven, very early first-round picks. And we have a, a good amount of picks overall in the draft. And when he was with the Bills, that was what he was known for, his very good scouting of players and development. That is what I am looking forward to. And that is where I'm going to leave it. We can go into the head.